Ladies and gentlemen, the new Monster Hunter World update has just released, and we have taken out Devil Joe. Got a lot of content to cover, but I figured in this episode we would review the new weapons and armor that you acquire from defeating Devil Joe. Hope you guys all enjoy the episode. If you want to see the full first fight, where I kind of show off the moves as well as just solo soloing him with dual blades, feel free to check out the card in the top right corner. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. I hope you guys all enjoy the episode. If you do, don't forget to sure smash that like button. Let's go ahead and go into the armor first. The Devil Joe armor is going to be down here. There we go. So we've got the Vangus Helm Alpha set and the Beta set. Let's go ahead and go into each. Well, let's check out exactly what it looks like first. Uh, so that is the Alpha set on the female. Not so bad. I kind of like it. It's, I mean, it's super green. I don't know why I would have expected anything else. Uh, we did see this kind of in the pictures already, so I'm not going to spend too much time. Here's the Beta set on the female. Super duper revealing. Not very armory, but that comes with the territory with female armor. I will be switching my character back to a male now that I can purchase the character changes. Um, but let's go ahead and go into the stats for each one. Now, for the full alpha armor set, we do have part breaker level 3, which we're getting one piece from the head, one from the gloves, and one from the boots. We've got handicraft level 3, helm 1, chest 1, and waist 1, and speed eating level 3, one from the chest and two from the boots. And latent power level three which isn't too bad uh, but all in all kind of anticlimactic i think let's go ahead and check the full stuff for the beta set speed eating three latent power three and attack boost uh three comes from the charm so that is not on the set so just keep that in mind part breaker level one comes from the helmets so let's go into each piece here we've got the part breaker one with a bonus handicraft and one gem slot for the alpha speed eating one from the chest and a two gem slot wow handicraft one We've got Latent Power 1 or 2 on the gloves with no gem slot, and then a Part Breaker. Latent Power 1 and Handicraft 1 from the waist. Speed Eating 2 and Part Breaker 1 from the gloves with no gem slot, or from the boots with one gem slot. Uh, for the Beta Armor boots, we've got Speed Eating 2 and 2 gem slots, or 2 1 slot gem slots. And on the waist, we've got Latent Power Level 1 and a 3 gem slot and a 1 gem slot. That's not terrible, but it's not great either. Uh, gloves, two things of latent power and a two slot gem slot. Okay. Uh, for the male beta, we've got speed eating one and a three slot gem slot. Terrible. At least in my opinion, that's, that's pretty, pretty atrocious. Uh, Devil Joe Helm, we've got part breaker one, three slot gem slot, and a one slot. I guess it's not uh, too terrible. I mean, this is obviously going for maybe like a hammer build or something like that. Uh, but all in all, not... Not that great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think it's kind of bad for a Devil Joe set? I don't know. I feel it's like a little anticlimactic as far as the stats go. I don't know if I would really use any of this in any particular build. So next up, let's check out all of the weapons. We're going to go ahead and go in order. So first up, we've got the great sword. Let's go ahead and go into the zoom here. I did unequip everything. Now you can get all of the Devil Joe equipment or weapons rather to the white level of sharpness with only two levels of handicraft, which is amazing because the attack on these are stupid high. So the Berserker Sword and the Anguish here, you can see has a base attack of 1104, gets to the white level of sharpness. Now downside, it does have negative 30% affinity, but on the bonus side, you've got two augmentation slots because it is rarity seven extremely high dragon element and high elder seal which is amazing this is the highest raw damage uh great sword that you can get and it gets up to the white level of sharpness absolutely insane these weapons are phenomenal let's go ahead and go to the tree i think the next highest is um well nergagante goes up to a thousand and eight um i think that is the highest one uh, other than obviously the devil joe one so next up, we got 1,008. So really, really high damage on that particular. 1,056, I think that was the next highest one. There we go. Yep. So Devil Joe's Anguish. Stupid, stupid high damage. Next up, we've got the Fatal Joe and the Fatal Bites for the Sword and Shield. The base attack is 308 damage. Gets to the white level of sharpness with two levels of handicraft. Negative 20% affinity. Not so bad. High Dragon Element and Elder Seal. Obviously, two augmentation slots again still. Very high damage on these. I don't think there's anything any higher than that. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the way it is for all of the weapons. 
next highest would be the uh, Eradication's Vanguard. So Devil Joe's weapon's extremely, extremely good. Fortunately, it doesn't have a gem slot, though. Next up, we've got the Devil's Dew and the Devil's Crush. We should probably go ahead and show off all of these. I apologize. I'll go back and show off the other ones. Um, but yeah, we get weight level of sharpness, negative 30 uh, affinity, obviously. So pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like completely. All right, so there's what it looks like. That's actually kind of cool looking. I like it. I definitely like the chain around it as well. Let's go ahead and check out the other ones that we forgot about. All right, the sword and shield. I like the chains around it. I wonder if that's meant to mean anything. Um, I don't know. It doesn't look like it <laughs> do very much damage. Like the teeth in the front? I don't know. It kind of looks ridiculous. Great sword. Looks uh, rather angry, although most of you have already seen this one. So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, the Mighty Lance. We've got the Grief Lance and the Fiendish Tower. So 529 base attack, white level of sharpness, negative 25% affinity, and decent dragon element at 210 and high elder seal. So let's go ahead and see what that bad boy looks like. Oh boy, that's a funky looking shield right there. The texture seems a little off on it. We can't even see the entire lance, but you can see it's freaking ginormous. Holy crap. Oh my goodness, that's ridiculous. Wow. All right, so let's go ahead and go on to the switch axe. This is one I'm actually excited for. I am super excited to build this one. It's probably going to be one of the first ones I build. Uh, so we've got the uh, Tyrannos and the Terror Tyrannos. So 770 attack. Wow, just shy of the Axe of Demons, actually. Where is that? So the Axe of Demons is at 805 attack. It can get to the white level of sharpness with 5, and it has a negative 30 affinity. Now this has negative 25 affinity and can get to the white level of sharpness with 2 has a power file so the the axe of demons still going to be better as far as raw damage goes um, but the dragon well the dragon element is out it, it might nah it's probably not going to be that great looks pretty cool though let's go ahead and take a look at that i'm definitely still going to make it even though the axe of demons is probably a little bit better all right so next up we've got the insect glaive still haven't really made any insect glaives so it's going to be on my top to do list here soon but we've got the bad wing and <laughs> is that okay and the and the crunch storm oh that's fantastic so 682 attack white level of sharpness negative 25 percent affinity and uh 210 dragon element and high elder seal with a health boost for the kinsect bonus take a look at what that looks like i really like the look of this one actually the purple just looks really good the purple and red glow oh, I, I actually really like that not a fan of all the negative affinity on these though all right, the heavy bow gun. Do we have a contender here? So 345 attack, negative 25% affinity. Let's see what we got. And that's a wyvern heart, so not so bad there. Oops, it's helping me hit the right button. There we go. So we've got uh, normal ammo 1, 2, and 3. Pierce ammo 3 with recoil plus 4, a very slow reload. A spread ammo 3 with slow reload. Sticky ammo 2 and 3. Cluster Bomb 2 and 3. All of those are slow, or very slow, rather. Uh, poison Ammo 2. Sleep Ammo 1 and 2, being normal and slow. Exhaust Ammo 1 and 2. Wow, 7 capacity and 6 capacity on those. Slow and normal. Uh, Dragon Ammo, slow, or very slow, actually. Then we got Slicing Ammo with 2 slots. Wyvern Ammo, Demon Ammo, and Trank Ammo. So not terrible, I guess. Go ahead and see what that actually looks like. This thing is actually going to look pretty cool once it's actually unsheathed. I don't like the negative affinity on it, though. I don't like the negative affinity on any of them, really. But they are pretty darn powerful. Ah, uh, the Mighty Long Sword. Ooh, that looks pretty. 693 base attack on the Reaver Cruelty. And then 759 on the Reaver Calamity. All of these are going to get to the white level of sharpness in two. Negative 25% affinity. 210 Dragon and High Elder Seal. Very nice. Let's take a look-see at that. I like this one. That is... That's kind of cool looking. I'm a fan. These are the ones I've been waiting to see. We've got the Wrathful Predation for the Dual Blades. And then we've got... Oh, that's that's the final one. Uh, the first one is the Wrath and Rancor. So, interesting. 308 base attack. 
Negative 20% affinity. Okay, not so bad, especially with the two augmentation slots. Elemental Dragon and High Elder Seal. So that is pretty darn good, uh, especially because the Diablos Clubs come in at 322 attack, can get to the white level of sharpness. Um, so these are still going to be better, but these definitely are going to outclass the Decimation Clause, except for the whole uh, negative affinity bit. So I don't know. It's, it's cutting it pretty close on some of these. It really depends on if you guys don't mind running the negative affinity. All right, these are freaking huge. They look ridiculous. Where the hell do your hands even go? Do you hold them like right at the tip? These are kind of like some... Where do you even hold them? There's like nowhere to hold it. You hold it on the freaking chains and smash them around? That's ridiculous looking. It's like a little heart too. That's adorable. Ooh, the hunting horn. The devil's maestro and the deep varro. 924 attack holy crap holy crap this might be the best hunting horn now this thing is insane 924 base attack with white sharpness the next great one was the basil reed rook slayer with 840 in white sharpness as negative 10 affinity on that one this has really high dragon element at 240 and high elder seal now the notes are where this gets crazy so we've got the self-improvement the attack up large but you should be able to Encore into Extra Large, Health Boost Large, Wind Pressure Negated, and Defense Up Large. Holy crap. This Hunting Horn is freaking amazing. I, I'm, I'm, I've been playing Hunting Horn a lot. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, go on a limb and say that is the winner so far of being the best Devil Joe weapon that we've seen. We can't really see the whole thing. I think it looks pretty cool. This is this might make Hunting Horn freaking up uh, just absolutely insanely good holy crap so we've got the gun lance we've got the ravenous gun lance 483 attack and then we've got the insatiable gun lance at 529 attack negative 30 affinity element 240 and high elder seal has a shelling type of long with level 3 shelling type so not terrible not great either um I, I, actually it's really not that bad i guess uh, I don't use Gun Lance a lot, so I can't really judge it too harshly. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this in the comments below. Are you going to use it, or are you still going to stick with um, that Raytheon one? Ah, the Charge Blade. Everyone's going to be excited about this one. Can it be a contender for the Diablos Tyrannus? That is the question, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, that looks freaking... It's a damn chainsaw. Holy crap. The Tyrant's Charge Blade and the Op Oppressor's Charge Blade. So 792 base attack, negative 25% affinity, dragon element 210, high elder seal, and a power element file. So we're looking at pretty much the, well, the slightly a lower attack on the Devil Joe weapon versus the Diablos Tyrannus. Very easy to get to the white level of sharpness. Less negative affinity, so it's only at 5%. Well, it's got 5% more affinity, and it's got the dragon attack. Obviously, you're not going to be doing the elementless build with this. Uh, but it is a very, very powerful one. What is it in comparison to the Nerdigante one? Which is 756. Cannot get to the white level of sharpness. So, I think this has taken the throne of the Devastation's Thorns. But might it's not going to match up to the power of the Diablos Tyrannus. Aside from that, it looks freaking amazing. So, uh, it might just take the cake for being the most freaking gangster-ass weapon in Monster Hunter World. I really wish those teeth would like chainsaw when you charge it. Oh my God, if it does that, gonna definitely use it. Absolutely gonna use it. All right, next up, we've got the light bow gun. I'm interested because we don't really have many options in the light bow gun department. Let's see what we got here. We've got the devil's grin and the devil's madness. 299 base attack, negative 25% affinity. What do we have for the ammo? We have nothing on rapid fire. Are you kidding me? Holy crap. No rapid fire and no reload. Uh, normal ammo 3, pierce ammo 3, spread ammo 3. This is garbage. Okay. Slice ammo 2. Okay, man. You can make a slice ammo build with this, I guess. Um, demon ammo, dragon ammo. Okay, interesting. Exhaust 2 and 1. Poison ammo 2, sleep ammo. So you could do a, a slicing ammo build with this. I guess that's not terrible. That's probably what they're leaning towards. Um, I would have loved to see at least one item with rapid fire on here, though. Jesus. Being said, it does have high base attack. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. It looks pretty cool. 
I still like my uh, my karma though. I don't think I'm gonna change from the karma yet. I might make a build with it though. If you guys want to see a build of this light bow gun, let me know in the comments below. Maybe we'll figure something out. Now, last but not least, the bow. Let's see what we got. Can we have a new critical draw bow? Maybe. Let's see here. Oh, that's allies armor. There we go. <laughs> I was like, that looks weird. Insurgents bow and the villainous the the villainous brace. So 276 attack. Affinity, negative 25%. Dragon Element at 210. And High Elder Seal, obviously with two slots. Uh, let's see here. So we've got Close Range, Power, and Poison. What's nice about this is we have higher base uh, attack on the actual... This is actually going to be really good. So 276 and negative 25% Affinity with the Dragon Element. And then we've got... That's going to make for a really good critical... Or just any kind of bow build. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so it's high... Higher damage than the Sarah Coilbender. Obviously, the non-element is really good on the Sarah Coilbender. But uh, we've also got five more affinity on the Devil Joe weapon. So not too shabby. The power and poison, I really like that. So I, I actually really like this bow. So I think between all of the weapons, the Hunting Horn and the bow are probably my favorite. So those are going to be the two that I go after first. Interesting. I don't know. I, I like all the weapons, but I feel like the Hunting Horn and the Bow have taken the cake for the best. Um, the Greatsword is pretty good, too. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I have, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to like them. They definitely have their uses. I'm not a big fan of negative affinity on weapons, um, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going to make the Hunting Horn and Bow first. We're going to be live streaming tonight, so feel free to check those out. I hope you guys all enjoyed the episode. It's run long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to share your support and smash that like button. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.